Life is and always has been a fight for, for space. space. From our crowded city streets to our passionate, passionate political protest to our daily battles for social inclusiveness, our lives are a constant war for space. Today, each of us feels it is our natural right to own a portion of our collective social, political, and physical spheres. But imagine we live in our world where our right to those things is controlled, regulated, even forbidden. Imagine we board a ship bound for the new world, seeking to overcome our oppression. We're afraid, uncertain of the challenges that lie ahead, but certain that we have hope for our new land that could bring us a newfound freedom. As our journey ends and the shoreline comes into view, for the first time, we behold a horizon so vast, so pristine, that we can already taste newfound freedom. Well, my friends, today, a new horizon is coming into view. One that has the same potential to free us from a space as a new continent does. Most likely, you've been there before. The next time you're outside, look at the sky through a different lens. That, that is our new world. That is our unexplored continent. That is our bountiful horizon. And our vehicles of exploration? Drones. Quadcopters. UAVs. But a drone by any other name would buzz as loudly, am I right? <laughs> That's a Shakespeare pun, by the way. <laughs> For all you millennials, Shakespeare was a writer. <laughs> But whatever name you know them by, has your curiosity, intrigue remained intact? Or have your feeling become skepticism and disbelief? When you hear the word drone, what do you think of? Do you think of vehicles of exploration? The ships Columbus sailed to the New World? The spacecraft that carried Apollo astronauts to the moon? Probably not. You probably recall a local news story about a neighbor saying a drone was spying on him, or a video clip you saw of a prior drone airstriking a war zone overseas. In fact, like many of us, my first introduction to drones was in the context of the military. In 2011, I was a plebe, or a freshman, at the United States Naval Academy, sitting in my leadership and ethics class. The professor, a retired Navy captain, played a recording that looked like a video game to me. That is, until I realized that the targets were, in fact, real people being attacked by a remotely piloted UAV. Well, it's been six years since then. And during that time, Nick and I have followed the adaptation of drone technology to the consumer market. Two years ago, I was one of those consumers. It was the summer going into my high school year. And I wanted to buy a drone. Coming from a background of aviation, having flown airplanes since I was 12, I thought, hey, it would be a natural transition, right? Well, was I ever wrong? <laughs> I found that operating a drone required extensive technical knowledge, and deeper than your knowledge had to be your wallet. So I thought, maybe there's a safe space I can go to fly. Once again, whew, was I ever wrong? There was no safe space to fly. In fact, there was hardly any space at all. One year later, Marjorie and I are very proud to have co-founded a startup that brings that space to us, a safe, legal space for people to fly drones. Our company has grown up with the fledgling drone industry. It's just two years old. And we've watched it change from a grassroots hobby to a mainstream pastime. But above all, we've witnessed the evolution of drone technology itself, from weapons of war to harmless items of entertainment to today, tools to make our lives better and the world around us improved. It is the ability of drones to change the way we use space that empowers each of us to affect positive change more quickly, cheaply, and effectively. There are countless examples of human being, beings adapting drones to change our lives and the world around us. For instance, last year, in Uganda, Rwanda, a drone startup out of Silicon Valley 
use drones to deliver medicine, blood, and other critical time-sensitive emergency medical equip equipment in less than 30 minutes to any hospital within the area. This system has already saved several lives and is being deployed in countries all over the world, including the United States. Drones are even being used to save the lives of, of critically endangered Sumatran orangutans. In 2014, a pair of biologists built a drone in order to observe these orangutan nests. They not only returned with high resolution video of these nests, but also of illegal logging activities contributing to habitat loss. This not only saved the biologists a quarter of a million dollars, but also three months of hacking through the dense Indonesian rainforests. Since then, they founded a startup dedicated to empowering others around the world to adapt emerging technology for conservation efforts. These are just two of thousands of examples that prove by embracing our new modern vehicles of exploration, we tap into new space that frees us of the constraints of our limited terrestrial Earth. But if drones have already been used to affect such positive change, why are we still so widely afraid of them? Partially because, as with any tool, when put in the wrong hands, drones can and will be a threatening weapon. But more inherently, we are afraid of drones because they change the dynamic of the space that we know. This powerful tool has crept into our lives and every single day becomes increasingly implanted in our society. When consumer drones first hit the global market in 2013, it is estimated that around 300,000 units were sold. Just two years later, that number increased by 600% to over 2 million drone sales around the world. And as of 2016, over 2.5 million drones were sold in the United States alone. This may sound like a lot, but the Federal Aviation Administration estimates that within just three years, there will be over seven million drones flying in American airspace alone. The prevalence of drones in our lives is unmistakable. And while we've all probably come into contact with drones in a different way, we've all similarly recognized their ability to change the space that we feel entitled to. Drones change our social space. A refugee-founded nonprofit is using drones to facilitate the safe arrival of Turkish refugees to Greece. Drones change our political space. Police departments in the UK are using drones to search for missing people and even to explore crime scenes. And drones change our physical space. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> A Welsh company is using drone imagery to identify the specific location of weeds to reduce the unnecessary use of harmful pesticides. Drones have permanently changed the way we use space. But if you take nothing else away from this talk today, know that this change can and will be positive. Nick and I are asked so frequently how we think drones can change the future of humanity. Well, having been immersed in this industry since its inception, and having witnessed the power of using new space, this is our response. Drone technology will launch a revolution in the transportation of human beings and cargo. This revol revolution will, in turn, will leave our primal fight for space, making our lives happier and healthier. Let's just take a look at the resources required to maintain our current system of transportation. In the United States alone, there are over 4 million miles of roads, enough to wrap around our Earth's equator 163 times. And last year, it cost the American taxpayer, that's right, you guys, $42.4 billion to build and maintain our public highways and bridges. <laughs> and parking lots? There are over 500 million in the United States alone, consuming enough area to eat that of the state of Delaware and Rhode Island. And even our beloved hometown city of Houston is estimated to consist of 25% parking space, but only 2.6% green space. Something has to change. The physical health of our environment is intrinsic to the mental health of our society. 
an MIT architecture professor, argues that if just 50% of, of our parking lots could be turned into green space, this area could handle 2 billion cubic meters of water every year, could produce 822,000 tons of oxygen for us all every year, and could absorb 1.2 million pounds of carbon dioxide every single year. Now imagine when, not if, when drones carry humans. Instead of driving on the ground, we're flying in the sky. Instead of parking in driveways, we're parking, excuse me, we're landing on building rooftops. And instead of spending billions of dollars maintaining and building our public infrastructure, we're spending just a fraction on the cost of the cost on air traffic control. Imagine the fresh air that would be breathed into our society. The freedom that would relieve our crushing terrestrial lifestyles. Drones have the potential to lead humankind into a new era of freedom. By using the space above us in new ways, we can use the space below us for life to thrive, for life to grow, and for life to just live. By embracing drone technology, we are unlocking the power of using new space and gaining the freedom to heal our world and each other. And that, that is our idea we're spreading. Thank you guys. <laughs>